Okay guys, so I'm showing you a few watercolor brushes that I love to use every time I paint a watercolor portrait or a watercolor fashion illustration. These have different effects on different types of paper, but I'm going to show you how I use them and how you can use them to get very textured details and very fluid watercolor paintings. So I'm using acrylic ink. As you can see, I'm putting it on the side here. And then I'm going to use a wet on wet technique where I apply the water first and then I apply the ink onto the wet area of the water. So this first brush is a Chinese calligraphy brush. It's made out of goat hair. You can get it on Amazon or in any Chinese or Japanese store where they sell art supplies. Again, I'm applying the water first, just a little strip of water, and then I'm going to dry this brush off and then dip it into the ink. And I'm going to apply the ink and put a little bit of pressure on it. The more pressure you put on it, the more brush strokes you'll get. So once you put pressure on it, then the, the bristles will kind of spread apart and you'll get more unique brush strokes. All right, the next brush is by Windsor Newton. It is Cotman brush. The number is 999. It is 16 millimeters. You can get it from any art store. I got this one for Michael. Um, you can create a very fluid watercolor, um, I guess you can say a watercolor image with this brush, or you can apply water to it and make it flat. And I'll show you what I mean. So again, I'm applying, I'm applying water first, drying it off, and then I'm going to dip it in ink, put a lot of pressure on it, and you can see how fluid this is. So I've turned it on the side and I've created this really fine line. Alright, the next brush is by Windsor & Newton as well. It's a very thin brush, it's Cotman 656 is the number. and. I really like this brush for details. You can use it on the side or you can just use the point for details. And I wouldn't say really fine details, I would say like kind of fluffier details. So you can see how I'm using the using the tip. And it's not a very 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 thin tip. It's still rounded. This next brush is one of my favorites. It's by Van Gogh. The number is 191. And I use the tip of this brush for eyelashes when I'm drawing the pupil of the eye. Uh, sometimes when I'm drawing things like earrings and I'm just wanting to get like a cute and fine detail, then I use this brush. So you can see just how thin and beautiful and fluid the end of the brush is compared to the Windsor and Newton brush. All right, this next brush is at an angle and the brushes are really tightly bristled together. I do not know the name of this brush because I bought it so long ago, but if you can find a small angled brush, it creates the most beautiful effect, I promise you, for watercolor fashion illustrations. And I'm gonna show you just how fluid. Can you see how beautiful the colors have flown out compared to the rest of the brushes? I mean, I wish I knew where I got this brush from because I would buy the same brand again, but it's amazing. All right, the last brush I'm going to show you is a Chinese hockey brush. I got this from like a Hobby Lobby. I love it because you can create two or three tones. So I've dipped half of it in purple ink. I'm going to dip the other half in like a magenta color. I'm going to apply water on the paper. And then I'm going to brush it in so it creates a really beautiful two-toned watercolor image. And as you can see, those brush strokes are there and it just creates... I love when brush strokes are on the paper. You know what I mean? It just creates a really interesting look. So guys, those are the brushes that I'm currently using and some of them I've used for years, especially the Windsor Newton brushes. I hope you guys will give these a try. Let me know if you have any of your favorite watercolor brushes and I will see you next week.